Hello, my name is Nicole Watson and I'd like to welcome you to my channel for the second edition of Our Favorites YouTube Hop, where I'm sharing my favorite ways to make circles in my art journal. I grabbed my Dina Wakely Media Journal and white and clear gesso and gesso both pages. Obviously <laughs> the white on the left and the clear on the right. Then I grabbed a few pieces of ephemera and tissue from my stash on my desk and began to collage them on the pages. My goal was to kind of bring the craft side to the left and the white side to the craft side so that the pages would look cohesive and not like you have two completely different journal pages on the left and the right. So by using the craft tissue on the left and also white and cream book text on both sides of the journal page, I tried to create some cohesion. So I, here I am collaging the book text and the craft tissue with matte medium. I spread a generous amount on the front and the back and then put them to the pages. I tend to like to put these kind of in sets of three around my pages to move your eye around or five. I really like odd numbers for some reason. I think it looks better. And then I just also like to be aware of the color of the text and the font so that I can have a variety on my pages. The next step I did was grab the gesso and kind of helped embed this text onto the pages so it didn't look like it was floating. I watered down the gesso and wiped it off where I didn't want it and just spread it generously around the pages. splattered some gesso for kind of like a random effect. I find that splattering different paint kind of helps break the surface of whatever canvas or journal pages I'm using so I'm not so scared to attempt the next step. So by splattering the white gesso on it led to spreading more gesso on that craft side. Again this helped bring the white over to the craft side to make the pages cohesive. Next was my first step in creating some circles on my page. So I grabbed this stencil from Ice Stencils. They're one of our sponsors and the Dina Wakely paint and an applicator and began to make circle stencils on my page. Now this kind of ended up being a happy accident. My foam applicator had some black paint on it previously, which was dry and I didn't think anything of it, but it ended up coming through my paint in different places and created some gray and also the natural color of circles. So it was kind of a fun, happy accident. So I suggest using dirty supplies once in a while. You'll never know what'll happen. So I just created these circles um, from left to right on the pages. Again, another way to make the two pages cohesive together. Then I grabbed my Stabilo All Pencils. These are probably one of my favorite, absolute favorite tools or anything, but really for making circles, I like to trace with them. So I traced with the black and the graphite, just random circles on the pages. This helps create shadow around the circles. It makes them not look so flat. Um, shadows and shading and kind of grunges up the page a little. I also made my own circles in different spots um, where there wasn't paint on the inside to kind of extend that stencil in a more organic way to the top and the bottom and the sides. And then I began to activate that stipula all since it's water soluble and this is what creates that shadow shading um, grungy effect to those circles. So this becomes a process of going back and forth with the two different stipula all pencils and um, my water and brush and activating, making them darker, making them lighter. I tend to be a little bit more free and sketchy with that graphite pencil and then maybe a little bit more intentional with the black one because it is a darker color. My next favorite process with the stabilo is to make some puddle of stabilo there on my ballot paper. You'll see that I just scribbled it on, added water, and this um, becomes a great way to make additional shadows and shading on the page. I like to flick it and get it random again and start the process. And because it's kind of transparent, you can layer it and make it darker and lighter. And because it is water soluble, you can also wipe it off if you don't like it. So here I am creating drips, shadows, shading, and fun with my stabula puddle. And I'm gonna go back and forth making circles and shadow shading and stabula puddle shading as I create this first layer of circles on my page.
I was happy with the results of my shadows and shading and the stibula all, I did grab my fixative and spray it to the pages so that whatever I did the next layers didn't disrupt this background that I had made. So then in the process of trying to be brave and add a color to my journal spread, I forgot to record. So here I am using an art foamy to create my next layer of circles. They are also a sponsor. They are a wonderful way to stamp onto your journal pages. And I just used the blue and some other colors to kind of create a, like a rusty effect. Here's the colors that I used. And my goal was to kind of make these circles look like they were aged or patinaed. So I just painted on one of the circles on the art foamies and stamped it in the center of the page to create the kind of patinaed look. Then I grabbed my paintbrush and added some additional of the blue and the other colors on the page to layer with the black stabila puddles that I had made on my pages and just kind of went with my instinct here. I kind of wanted those to drip so it looked like the rust was aging and then added some drips and the color throughout the page and enjoy my little process here as I kind of go back and forth to spread the blue color bravely on these pages because I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to add color and I was really happy with the results once I dug in and was brave enough to add that color. My next step was to kind of create a message or a focal point to my pages. I grabbed this dictionary page that I had previously watercolored on for a brush magazine, a monthly challenge prompt, which they are also a sponsor. And um, I ripped that apart and adhered it to a white tag. I decided to use a white tag on the right side of the page because the right side wasn't, um, just didn't have enough white to it. So I thought a white tag would help bring that white over to the right craft side a little bit more. And so I adhered that page part of that page with a matte medium and then also added some of the blue shadowing shading color on the back and eventually I'll add it to the other side as well and I'm going there you go I'm adding it <laughs> I'm also going to add some of that craft paper numbers on the front and the back and some scribbling after that dries so then I noticed that those um, blue circles weren't standing out as much as I wanted so I grabbed my favorite stibulo and traced around the edge. Originally, I wasn't going to activate it and just left it sketchy, but you'll see in a minute that I do activate that black stabilo. Then I grabbed the graphite stabilo and I made much more sketchier lines. I didn't care, you can see how much faster I'm making those circles. I wanted to add another layer of interest. I felt like it needed something, so I grabbed these little number stickers to kind of continue that number theme and just put them random places on the pages. No method or purpose to what numbers and where that I put them. In order for them to stay on the page though, I did layer them with some matte medium and so they didn't look like they were floating. I made another puddle of that stabilo and water and made some shadows around those numbers and you'll see that come up after I add the matte medium.
vestibulo, I set my journal to the side and began to work again on the tag that was now dry. I wanted to add a sentiment to the front, so I grabbed this cool stamp set from Red Lead, who are also a sponsor of the hop, grabbed my Ranger archival and stamped this neat saying onto the front of the tag. began to add a few more elements to tie it to the journal page. Like I said earlier, I add some of those craft numbers and I'll add some more um, stubulo shading and stubulo pencil marks to kind of help create some cohesion behind that tag with the journal pages. that craft paper on the top with the 15 and the 6 was really sticking out to me. I didn't like how it worked. So I used some of my stibula puddle and some of the blue to kind of push it a little bit more behind and not have it look like it stood out so much. It kind of looked like a boat sail or a flag or something and it just didn't have the right look for my pages. So here I am playing with that paint and the stibula to try to push it back and then um, make it look a little better and I saw a few other spots that I wanted to add some color. So I'm just kind of putting the final touches on these two pages with some color. So I decided to add that craft tissue to the back of my tag as well and grunge up that side with my stabilo, trace around those circles, and just add some fun um, texture and shading before I put it into the journal page. So I just used some simple masking tape to put this as a tip in between my two pages. I did forget to record putting that baker's twine on top. The baker's twine was really bright and I thought it wasn't grungy enough for my pages so I did kind of dip it in to my paint there on the left to make it look a little bit more worn and tattered and I'm sorry I forgot to record that process. Here I am um, also using the palette knife to kind of push that masking tape into the book binding so that my page sticks. Um, I do use acid-free masking tape to make sure that it's not going to discolor and look funny over time. Then to keep that masking tape secure and make it not look so bright and pristine on these pages, I'm going to grab that stabilo and put it on top and also some matte medium so that that masking tape is a little bit more secure to my pages. And that's it! This is my couple favorite ways to make circles on my journal pages. I did put a slide earlier of a couple other techniques that I'd like to use that I didn't fit in. I hope you enjoyed watching Make Circles and I hope you try some of these techniques as well. Stay tuned to the end to see a, a slide of all our sponsors. I'd like to thank them so much for all their generous prizes and support they've given us artists and also stay to the end for the link to the next video to watch in this hop. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing your pages and how you incorporate circles into your journal pages. Mm -hmm.